Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again. Back for your first video blog of the day for Wednesday, July 29th, 2015, around 6.54 in the morning, Bellwicker, Massachusetts. It's going to be a nice and sunny day, hot and humid and hazy, highs in the 90s, no rain showers today, or thunder showers, so be dry, but drink lots of water. Some news to report, the Chicago White Sox beat the Boston Red Sox by the full score of 9-4, ruining Pedro's night for like his number 45 being retired. The Red Sox suck, 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 as the late Peter Courtney, former maintenance guy at Hot Hanks would say. Williamsport beat the Lowell Spinners by the score of 6-5. It's happy National Lasagna Day and happy National Chicken Wings Day. Hooters will be busy because it's National Chicken Wings Day. There's a couple of Hooters in Massachusetts, Saugus, and West Springfield one of these days. I hope it comes back to from the city of Boston. We'll wait and see about that. And that's about it on the news. My first video blog subject of the day is the continuation of the top 10 everything and anything. I've reached the top 10 worst professional wrestling managers of all time. This is a very impressive list of the worst managers of all time in professional wrestling. Some of these, you know, they were awful as managers and stuff. And here they are. Number 10 on this list is Sonny Ono. Sonny Ono was a manager in WCW in the mid to late 1990s. He was like playing like a stereotypic Asian guy. He ma mainly managed um, Japanese wrestlers and stuff, but he's managed a few, few like other wrestlers, some ma mas Mexican luchadors and Ernest the Cat Miller. And his promos were awful and stuff because the, he, he had limited English skills and stuff. So he was number 10. Number nine on this list, the worst professional wrestling managers of all time, Lester's Johnny Valiant, also known as Lester's Johnny V. Johnny V was the first, was it the manager of Hulk Hogan in AWA when Hogan came into the AWA, but the fans cheered Hogan, so um, Johnny V was dropped. Eventually, Johnny V went to the WWE to manage Bruce the Barber Beef, Craig, Greg DeHammer Valentine, the Dream Team, who won WWE Tag Team. Gold, also he matched Spoiler, the first manager of Demolition, and Dino Bravo. He and in the AWA he managed the Destruction Crew and stuff. But like Johnny V's like was very awful as manager in my opinion. He was you know very bland and stuff. He was a great tag team wrestler. The Valiant Brothers, who weren't really related, who were in the WWE Hall of Fame. But like Johnny V as a manager sucked. Number eight on this list of the top. The worst professional wrestling managers of all time, Hillbilly Jim. Hillbilly Jim was manager of the Godwins, and he also managed Al Uncle Alma and Cousin Junior. Face managers are pointless, and um, Hillbilly Jim was, you know, a pointless manager and stuff like that. He was good, like as a like a gimmick wrestler, but as a manager, he sucked. Number seven on this list of the worst professional wrestling managers of all time, the devious one, Mr. Fuji. Mr. Fuji had, you know, a, a, he he was, you know, a famous heel wrestler who was, to, who was a tag team wrestler back in the day. When he became manager, he managed a magnificent rock all and stuff. And they had the, scum, the, the skits on TNT, Fuji Vice, Fuji Vandio, Fuji General. They were so cheesy and corny, you could laugh at that. Uh, Mr. Fuji, like Mike Skills, was um, awful because he, you know, he, he speak limited English. But the worst thing, like Mr. Fuji did, he in 1988 he turned on Demolition at the Survivor Series, the champions, and he went with the challenges, the powers of pain, and that this infamous double switch that was probably one of the worst switches ever for a manager to go from the champions to the challenges um powers of pain wallet and barbellion wallet and barbellion did not win the wwe tag team championship eventually mr fuji was led yoko sooner to the wwe championship but they had it bring in jim Cornette to become um yokozuna's american spokesperson number six on this list of the worst professional wrestling managers of all time mr one paul jones mr 
when Paul Jones was kind of an awful manager and stuff. He managed like um, Abdullah the Butcher, the Assassins, the Muhammad Express, the, the Barbarian, and he was known for his long running feud with the Boogie Woogie Man Jimmy Valiant and stuff, which lasted over two years. And and Paul Jones being a manager was very very awful. The the Boogie Woogie Man Jimmy Valiant and Paul Jones feud was like the Austin McMahon feud in WWE, but it was more boring and it was all it was awful. Number five on this list of the worst professional wrestling managers of all time, Precious Paul Elling, who was basically the manager of the Low Warriors um, for many many years when the War Warriors turned face. He was still with them, but you know, face managers are pointless and stuff. And Paul Ellery, you know, was into the background and stuff with the Wall Street Journal. It was awful. Number four on this list of the worst professional wrestling managers of all time DDP, Diamond Dallas Page. Um, Diamond D Dallas Page was, you know, managed in the AWA and uh, WCW before becoming a wrestler. He was okay at the mic skills, but you know he was not. You know he was not a great manager. He managed Bad Company and also the Freebirds and uh, Diamond Star. But once he became a professional wrestler, his career skyrocketed. But as a manager, he sucked. Number three on this list of the worst professional wrestling managers of all time: Harvey Whippleman. He was like. Um, downtown Bruno in Memphis, which you know he was a decent manager, but when he got to the WWE, he got mainly lower mid card heels like and stuff like um, Big Bully Lee Busick, The Warlord, Kamala, Giant Gonzalez, Adam Bomb, The Well Done Quain. His only success was Sid Je Justice and Birth of Faye, but like. Harvey Whippleman, you know, as a manager, you know, sucked. And, you know, he was famous for that feud with um, Howard Finkel. Number two on this list of the worst professional wrestling managers of all time, Clarence Mason. Clarence Mason came into the WWE as the lawyer of Jim Cornette, but eventually he became a manager. He took Owen Hart and Davey Boy Smith away from Jim Cornette also managed Crush, also managed the Nation of Domination, but Clarence Mason did not get physically involved in the match and as he, he didn't have too much promo skills and stuff, so he was bad as a manager but the number one worst professional wrestling manager of all time was Sir Oliver Humperdinck Sir Oliver Humperdinck um, managed in Florida and the WWE and stuff stuff but he was awful as a manager in my, my humble opinion the worst wrestling manager of all time sir Oliver Oliver Humperdinck and that's about it on that hope you enjoy these Facebook video YouTube and, and Twitter video blogs they are awesome and stuff and coming soon is 17 more days into the first ever rich question and answers video blog so Facebook YouTube and Twitter send me your questions I'll answer them it would be a monthly video blog every month I got some questions already so please send the questions in have a good day Facebook YouTube and Twitter keep calm and I'm a Julie Brown guy Molly Rosenblatt the Fox 35 rocks and the words of Sean Lucha